go to um, uh, we're going to go to chapter four. <clears throat> And we did talk about some of this before, but uh, I'm just going to spotlight verse 13 and 14. And I'm going to do that to help us see. I probably should have erased all of these, or at least how about this. Let's see if I just do it like this. I wonder what people that just listen to the tape think when they hear <laughs> weird stuff going on. What are they doing? <sighs> Who knows? Ephesians 4 and verse uh, 13 and 14. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Okay, so notice that there is a unity of faith related to to the Son that we're all supposed to come to. It's not related to Jesus. It's not related to Christ. It's not related to the Savior. It's related to the Son of, I guess I can put the Father back up here. There is a unity in relationship to knowing, and it says the knowledge, but it is knowing the Son. I mean, you know, it's not a knowledge about the Son, it's the knowledge of Him. And if you're going to know the Son, who are you going to know? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you know me, you're going to know the Father. <clears throat> so Jesus, part of His ministry, and and Part of uh, the heart of the Son before the foundation of the world was that the Father might get sons in the image of Christ, but not, not just, you know, but sons. That means a relationship um, through Christ that would be not Christian. <laughs> That's a weird way of putting it. But not Christian sons, but the father's sons, the father's sons, and we get that by Christ, and again, that is, uh, that applies to both male and female, just like bride applies to both male and female, so, so this is, this is declaring um, something that the Father wants to happen because it's going to result in something that comes out of His Son to the Father, not just that comes out of the Son to Christians. You know, if you put Christians out here, okay, here they are. Here, well, you could probably just do it this way. Put a little coffee bar over here. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, there's some donuts. That's not a halo, that's a donut. I draw them exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. I'm a master artist. You probably didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, and, and notice the word all, all, okay? So if you, if, you, if you identify these guys over here, uh, the Christians in this church, God is talking to all. He's talking to all of them. He wants all of them to come to something in relationship to the Son that is going to solidify eternal um, uh, relationship and eternal um, uh, communications of heart then instead of 
teachings and stuff, church teachings. It's going to be eternal things from his heart to his heart and his, the son's heart to the father's heart. And we, yes, we have fellowship. Here's, here's two that were over here now that are in son. They're in son, according to Hebrews 1, 3. Um, but they, and they're having fellowship. But truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his son. And that we, we're now entering into something. We're not just sitting over here within the church having fellowship with the Father and the son. I hope you see the difference. It sounds the same, but this does not, this kind of fellowship and this kind of knowing the Son does not take place in the church. It takes place in the Father and the Son. And we enter into that. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son. And so we could draw ourselves down here and say, well, you know, I'm right here in the middle of my fellowship with the Father and with the Son. But that, that'd, be, that'd be inappropriate. <laughs> it also wouldn't be right. It'd be incorrect. That's, that's not, you, that's putting ourselves in something in a manner that we do not belong. And you know in the Old Testament when you, you stepped into areas that you didn't belong, you know, it didn't go good, you know. What were the sons of Aaron, the oldest two that, what, Bob and who? <laughs> Bob and who, Mike? Larry, Bob and Larry. You don't hear a lot of them about their names because they didn't last that long. Anyway, they brought a uh, strange fire, and uh, they, meaning they brought something into the relationship you know, oh, I'm on fire for God. This is really good. This is da 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 da. But you're in there, and you're gonna have to die. Yeah. You have to. You know, we go. Oh, my God, God killed him. He killed you. You're crucified with Christ. <laughs> you know, you're what? Oh, he he drowned all those people in Noah's day. Well, there you go. I am crucified. Not I will be. Not I was, but I am. And really the, the Greek there is that I, I was crucified with the effect that it is still, that crucifixion is still am, uh, impacting me today. It's, it's what we always called an eternal verb. It is a past finished work having present results. That's the, that's the more proper way <laughs> grammatically to say it. And I feel so good for saying it. Correctly. See, I can't even stand to have this on here. Off, get off. <laughs> really, it just runs against my grain. Um, we're in Son, and in truth, see, the fellowship is not really us in there having fellowship with one another and saying truly our fellowship is with the Father. Our fellowship is that we are, we are in the Son in such a manner that we don't see what we were over here in the church. Well, I'm a, I'm a special, you know, I'm an evangelist, or I do this, or, you know, I do that and all that. In son, those things don't matter. This is an eternal relationship. This is not some sort of religious thing we're going to do for, you know, 70, 80 years, and most of us never live that long, or at least don't, are not in the ministry that long. But how short is that amount of time? You talk about temporal. This is the ancient of days. Did you have your hand up? No. Okay. So, uh, would you like to say something anyway? Your hair looks great. No, 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 it, it looks really good. Where's my camera? I'll take a picture. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, so, the, so the, the process of this is going to require losing yourself more than it's going to be gaining yourself. But what is going to happen? The, see, didn't Jesus say, well, if you seek to save, you lose. But if you lose, you gain. If you lose yourself in him, then you find yourself. And he said those words right in that same area. If you lose this being, this church creature over here, and, and find yourself in son, you'll find yourself 
before the eyes of the Father as the Son, as one with him, therefore he sees Christ in you. Does that make sense? Yes. And uh, that's the goal. That's the, that's the thing. I mean, there, you know, see, we, we came out of the world, and we came out of sin, and we came out of all that kind of stuff. So we think there's one leap you make, and that one leap is out of the world and sin into the church with the barista thing there. And, that, and um, that now in here, in this, in this, in this bag of M&Ms called the church, <laughs> we, yeah. Someone's nuts. Yeah. Well, we've been called a granola church before. I said, what is that? And it says a bunch of fruits and nuts and, and what was the other one? Flakes. <laughs> and I said, okay, we're a granola church. I couldn't argue with that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about y'all. Do you realize? <laughs> They're looking at me like, that's funny. It's y'all we're talking about here. All right, so there's this leap. We make this leap, and we're in the church, and then we talk about, I mean, imagine this, okay? Imagine we haven't comprehended this relationship with the Father and the Son, have we? comprehended it as eternal in them we so we sit in this m and m bag and we share we talk inside the church and we talk and we say oh jesus you know we're, we're not talking about this we're not talking about the son we're talking about jesus of nazareth you know the three and a half year guy <laughs> right the three and a half year guy. this is the eternal guy He's always been the son, and he always will be the son. But we talk about Jesus. Well, oh, Jesus is so precious to me, you know, and this and that. I know he is, you know, and we know it. Shut up. No, not real. <laughs> not real. I'm just joking on that. I'm joking. You know. But it's time to talk about him in a different way. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know. <laughs> See, that's why I'm in trouble with everybody. That's why everybody hates me. Okay, so, um, but there's another leap that has to be made, but that leap here, see, when we get out of the world and into sin, okay, so we say, well, I'm going to give up my identity. I was, uh, well, I was a drug dealer, and, and uh, I partied a lot, and, and I did crazy things, but now I'm a Christian. And I don't do that stuff. <laughs> I don't do all that stuff anymore, okay? So, um, so we, feel, we say, I've identified with Christ. No, you haven't. You've identified with Christianity. That's all. That's where your identification is. And, I, you know, you say, well, where do you get this from? Because that's what I did. I know exactly what this feels like, and I know what it feels like to, to, to think, I'm so much better now. You know, I mean, when you're the black sheep of a family of black sheep, <laughs> it's, you know, you, and you get saved, it's like, I'm clean now. And of course, my stupid head, I thought, everybody's going to love me now. And I walk up to them and go, Hey, I found Jesus. And they go, oh, go back to drugs. You know, <laughs> they don't want none of that. But you feel, you do, you feel like, you know, I've, I've, I've got the Lord and, and I'm, I am, my, my cause now is Christ and I live for God and everything. Well, you know, you go to church, but a lot of it isn't living for God. I mean, you know, there is Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Friday and Saturday. Okay. I'm living for God. Yeah. What? A couple hours a week? You know, and, and I'm, I'm not saying we don't do the best we can. I'm not saying that we don't. I think we do the best we can, but our best isn't good enough. So, um, so, he's, so but here's the deal. We think this is what he wants. 
Just bag us up and this is what we'll be. That's not what he wants and that's not what he wants for us. Amen. That's just, a, you know, you get saved into this. But if you get in some, you're going to be saved from that. I don't mean you won't go to church or you don't that it pray or any of that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that what happens in Son is that your identity changes again, this time from this over here in the church to being conformed to the image of the Son. Amen. That we might be conformed to the image of his Son. S-O-N. Isn't that what it says? Amen. Okay. So... Um, so this transition is, see, this might be a transition from the world of sin and all of that into the church, but there's a transformation that happens from the church into Christ in the sense of what we're talking about. And again, I'm not condemning the church and this and that. It's the, the, the word is used throughout the scripture. I don't know if we're applying it correctly, but that's nonetheless, um, my, my goal isn't to attack but I will tell you for sure that, that there, when you make this leap from the church and church entity and the way of all of that kind of stuff into the sun, you, you know, it's, it's a transformation. And you know what? Isn't that really what we think we're pursuing? Let me give you an example. Um, uh, what's it say in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18? It talks about when we, you know, when we see him, then we're changed into that same image. What image? It's this image that the Son has that the Father wants. And of course, we know that to be lamb, and we know that to be a lot of different uh, things in, in relationship to that nature. And it is a nature thing. But the son is the one with the nature. We don't naturally have that. And you don't just get the, you don't get, let's put it this way, you don't function by the nature of Christ just because you get saved. You know how I know? I've been to church. I've been to this church. <laughs> I know that you don't. You don't. You don't. I don't. We don't. There's a process, but there begins to be a revelation that unveils this sun, and then we enter into something that we can never be by ourselves out here in church or alone over here with the little guy we drew there or, you know, in the world. There is no way. It is, it is the fulfillment. You say, where do you get that from? Verse 13 and 14. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a knowledge of who? Son of God. Unto a perfect man, not men. Notice, this is the only perfect man there is. And he, we're not supposed to compare ourselves with Jesus. We're supposed to conform to Jesus. Christianity tells you to compare yourself and try to measure up. Well... The law tells you that. I'm going to use the last L on all. The law, we're done with you. The law tells you that. And many Christians are under the law because they're trying to measure up. And they don't even know it because they love Jesus. You know why they're trying to measure up? Because they love Jesus. That's exactly right. They do. It's not because they hate Jesus. It's not because they're bad. It's not because we should condemn them. We're not. We're lifting up Christ above us in every form, just like the book of Hebrews does. So uh, measure uh, unto a perfect man, not men, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness by which they lie in wait to deceive you. Okay, so the last part of that is there's a measure. And don't you, don't you get that in the book of Ezekiel? And don't you get that in the book of Revelation? There's a guy with a measuring rod. And he's standing for God. I, you know, whether it's the Holy Spirit or whatever, it doesn't matter. The Father measures everything by Christ. <laughs> the Holy Spirit does. 
So the measure is the fullness of Christ, not some of Christ. It's his fullness. And of his fullness we receive. And so, you know, we're going, well, I'll, you know, I'll take this little portion right here, you know, because I like that portion of Jesus. He's not a pie that you cut up and take portions. That's the, that's the problem. That's the problem, is that we, um, we still approach it from over here in the church or in Christianity, whatever word you want. We approach it from there. We go, we're measuring it outside of Christ. And any measure that's outside of Christ is not the fullness of Christ. It's not. It's, it lacks fullness. It lacks, uh, uh, it lacks the, the life and the vitality that is Christ. And it's only a form, having a form of godliness. It's a form. And it's, it's not the form of Satan. It's, you know, we go, well, it's not the form of Satan. It's a form of godliness. But still coming short of the fullness of him, the full stature that is him. And that's what the scriptures are trying to tell us here. So um, let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 2 this time. Hebrews chapter 2. Are y'all having fun yet? Gosh, I don't even have Hebrews in my Bible. What happened? Oh, there it is. You know, some of you never heard this, but when I was young and witnessing, uh, and I didn't know the Lord uh, too well, I was a brand new Christian, and I was witnessing to somebody, and, um, and I had my Bible, and I was telling him about it, and he was a Christian. And I was telling him that the Lord could do miracles and heal you and do stuff like that. And he told me, he said, no, that, that passed away with the apostles. That's no longer true. And I said, this scripture right here, this is no longer true. And he said, yeah. And I just grabbed my Bible and I ripped the page out. And I said, is there anything else in there that's not true? I knew better than I. He just went. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I continue to mess with people. Anyway, Hebrews 2.9. Uh, 2, well, let's go, um, let's go back to verse 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him, but now we see not yet all things put under him. Okay. So what is this saying? I mean, is this saying that Jesus won the victory and he has victory over everything, but he decided it'd be fun to let the devil and sin and everything else still run rampant? We, it's true. No, he's saying it's true, but we don't see that. What is he saying? Um, well, I'll tell you. <laughs> He's saying, I know you're not going to see it here yet, but he's saying that the Father wants sons, not just victors, and not just Christians that are saved with the victory. And to get that, it's going to take a little more, so he's not showing it as all victory in our lives. Now, can I ask you, is it all victory in your life? Okay. Because I'm still looking for that one. <laughs> My eyes are running to and fro over the whole earth. <laughs> um, so he says, um, for it became him for whom are all things. So he's going to start talking about this process. He even put Jesus through. Okay, for it became him, um, well, sorry, I, I'm, verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering. <clears throat> Just stop right there. What is it we see now? Do we see Jesus totally victorious? I mean, we know that that's true, but we don't see it here. 
Do we? And so, so he's going to tell us what we do see. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Okay? So he's bringing in suffering and that suffering is going to be related to things that are under his feet but he is, but it is not functioning in that. He's functioning to reach something else and we're going to read what it is. Crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste of death for every man. Well, okay. I mean, I don't know how your mind works, but I'm going to scare you with mine. <laughs> Um, in that verse, it says, a uh, little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. You got it? Okay, that's one slice of the bread. I'm going to put the other slice on, but let's put the meat inside the sandwich next. The one side we've seen of, that is a piece of bread is suffering of death. Crowned with glory and honor, that's the meat inside. Now let's put the other piece of bread on that he, by the grace of God, should taste death. Okay, what are the two sandwich pieces on there. What are they? Suffering. They are suffering death. Right? What is in the middle of that? Crowned with glory and honor. I have a theory. <laughs> and you don't have to believe this. And I'm, I'm pretty dumb sometimes myself. I have a feeling this crowned with glory and honor is related to his death. Because that's the context. Let me look at the scripture. On either side of it, it hated. See, if it wasn't, and this is again maybe my thinking, if it wasn't, I would have assumed that he would say that for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, so that he might sit on a throne victoriously and it just get louder and bigger and everything. But he's, he sandwiches it in there as if that's bringing <laughs> glory and honor to the Father by the Son. Spirit, the Son way. And what is the Son Spirit? What is the Son way that He is doing? What, what is it that He's bringing glory and honor to the Father? By suffering this death, He's going to bring many sons. It's coming up in the next few verses. Do you see it? That, that, that by this suffering, He's bringing glory and honor because in His death, He's birthing new sons. It's like a, like a, what's it called? Supernova. It's, called, it's like a supernova. When a star, when a sun goes supernova, it explodes and many sons are the result of that. More sons are the result of that. And so Jesus is going to go supernova for the Father's sake, that the Father will get more of the Son in us and will be conformed to that image. And that's what it's talking about. That's the context. Let's, let's keep reading. For it became him for whom are, are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory. What? Is that what it just said? Or did I make that up? Is that your Bible too? Or is that just mine? Is this the Randy Nussbaum version? Or is this the Queen Anne version? King James. <laughs> Um, okay, so when you, when you grab it in that context, you can see that all of this is relating to the Father's heart. This is the Son. This is the heart. This is, this is the only way to... Wait, I'll read that through here. This is... This is the heart of the Son toward the heart of the Father. This is the Son recognizing what's in the Father's heart and will go to any extreme to bring that about. Okay, look at us. Let's, let's say the Father comes and says, here's what I want. You know, I want more sons. Will you die for it? And we go, huh? Uh, you know, I'm right now I'm the only begotten. You know, I'm special. You know, and I know that God is, you know, I know that you really, you know, you talk about me all the time and stuff. If we have more, it's just gonna muddy the water. 
you know? Just take me, baby, I'm what you want. No, that's not what he did. He saw something in his heart. See, he didn't, God help us. He didn't, he didn't get a, a, the father gives him an email, you know, and say, dear son, what I would like is more sons, and I would like you, I'd like you to go die so I can get more. I don't think he said it to the son at all. I think he saw it in the heart of the father. Now see, I don't know everything, so, so I don't know if that's right, but I know that that's what happened to me. I saw this in the heart of the Father, and it turned me. It changed me. It drew me. It, it said, I'm not what's important here. What, he, what the Father wants, or in the case of Jesus wanting the bride, what Jesus wants is important. And it's, it, if you, see, if you, again, you get that email to you, good luck with getting that, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, chewed up and assimilated, no. But when you see his heart, see, he might even, I, I'm gonna tell you something about God. A lot of times he hides his heart from us. I mean, you, you have examples of this all throughout the scriptures. He'll hide stuff from us, not so that it's, we, so that he doesn't, because he doesn't want us to know it, but because he wants us to pursue him. And he wants us to act in accord with him. I mean, you got this situation of, of uh, Moses and God and the children of Israel and the children of Israel acting up and stuff like that. And uh, God says, you know, comes to, to Moses and says, get out of my way. I will destroy them. That wasn't really his heart. So Moses says... Well, Lord, that's not really what's, what's in your heart, and that's not what you really want to do. And besides, the, the heathen of the nations, you know, will see that you did this, and the, they'll misunderstand you and all this kind of stuff. And it repented God. Did God sin? <laughs> it just meant that he turned, but, but he already knew what he'd do. He cannot work outside of if you will, if it's Jesus, he can't work outside of lambship. So he just wanted to hear it out of Moses' mouth. That's all. Is it in there? You know what? Maybe next class we'll really get into this and we'll see some real examples of this. Because it's important. This is important. If our concept is, again, law, then anything God says to us, that's law. We have to do this. This is law. This is the way it is. My God, God said it. But I can show you, and again, we'll, we'll look at it next time. Um, anybody ever read in the New Testament where, where Jesus said something to the disciples? This he said to, to test them or to prove them. You see it a lot. And it's real evident in the Old Testament, too. There are things that he will not press us with. There are things he will not. Um, and if our view is just that God is law, and if he says it, that's what he wants, then he will say certain things or even not say certain things, but he will say certain things and we'll think, just like he said to Moses, well, get out of the way and I'll kill him. And he goes, have at it. You're Lord, whatever you say goes. I don't need to know your spirit. I don't need to really know your heart. I'm just gonna obey whatever you tell me to do. I don't, I'm not involved with you in that way. You're just the boss. And so, you know, have at it. And then kills all them people, and then he stands before God, and uh, God says to Moses, you are the cause of their death because you didn't know me. I mean, what about that? 
could that, I mean, could that be a possibility? That you should have stood with me. You should have known me. You should have flowed with my spirit, but you didn't. You didn't have any clue. And I know all about that because I still to this day at times haven't, but I particularly didn't even know that I could. I, I wasn't even aware that I could. I wasn't even aware that I could say, wait a minute, because he says stuff to me now, and I go, wait a minute, that's not your spirit. Anybody ever? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm getting some nods here. Yeah. You know, I go, that's not your spirit. That's not the way you operate. And he goes, I just want to know if it's working in you. And you go, well, it's not fully working in you, but I got that one. <laughs> you know. Praise God. Um, so, what did I read here? Okay. Um, so I want you to I want you to consider in the future when you're reading Hebrews two, uh, especially um, uh, seven through um, I guess twelve um, that you see it differently. I'm challenging you that you see it in light of a heart, the heart of the Father, and, and, and not just that, but in light of the heart of the Son that says, if that's in your heart, let's do it. Well, we're talking about you being God and you looking bad and you um, uh, being misunderstood and people thinking the worst about you and da-da-da-da. How big do you think the heart of the Father was to the Son? He goes, let's do it. <laughs> Sounds like Jesus was a Texan. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> let's just do it. If this, is, if this is, will this get you what, you what is in your heart? But see, he's not, again, he's not, Jesus is not under the law and going, Okay, yeah, I'll do it, but dang, <laughs> couldn't you make it a little easier? No, he's not going to do that, he's, you know, but the son has no problem doing this. We're the ones with the problems. You know what I'm saying? We're the ones with the problem. Okay, well, admitting is great because that's, that's important. Also admitting that this heart, let this heart, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. On and on and on, down to even the death of the cross. Where does the time go? We started late. We had a lot of announcements. I'm supposed to meet with Cassie at what time? <laughs> Cassie, I can't meet with you. Class went long. <laughs> we went till midnight. This is a first. We went till midnight. I don't know. I, I wasn't expecting it either. They all slept in class, but I went on. I pressed on. <laughs> um, so let's at least finish reading uh, this. Uh, in um, verse 10, for it uh, became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory. Um, so the, the first thing that you have to see in there is the Father. That he did it for the Father and that the sons, it uses the term sons, that only a father could be blessed by sons. I mean, in the context of what we're talking about here. Okay, and if you can see that, and if you can start seeing the, the scriptures through his eyes and his heart, it's just, it's like it lights up. It just lights up to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Who's their salvation? Uh, sinners, no. The ones who are going to become sons. And he did it through what? Suffering. Why? Because that's how you get sons, and that's what it's going to say. For both he that sanctifieth and they that are sanctified are all of one. Anybody like that little phrase, all of one? All of one, all of one, all, all but of the one, and therefore not 
just this over here, but this over here. It is a new identity, but if you could imagine just to be willing to um, uh, exchange your identity for his and to enter into that and all the flood that comes with that. I mean, it would be like if there was a, we needed water and, you know, I mean, the, the outside there's water to the roof or something. We opened the door, it would just all would pour in. It would all be there. But, but we're, we're so, we're so tedious. I'm, Lord, help me quit thinking about that right now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> It's, yes, it's you and others. <laughs> but it's, we are, we're so tedious. We're so, well, what about this and, and this and this little thing right there? And that, you know, it's like swallow a gnat and what's the other part? <clears throat> what, swat a fly? <laughs> What'd you <laughs> Strain at a camel. That's tough. That's tough. We make it that hard. We make it that hard. And, you know, blessed be the God and Father who has blessed us with all of one in his Son. Blessed be the Father. It's not like... Why did you put me in this? I don't get it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think one more verse. Um, well, let's do all of verse 11. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Okay. So here's what we do. We go... Jesus is not ashamed to call me his brother because I am born again and I'm in the family. Anybody ever said that before in relationship to the scripture? That is not what it's saying. It is not. The brethren is that you're a son with him, in him. See, we only see the brethren part, so we go, well, Jesus, you're my brother. That's what we're getting instead of we're all sons and we're all of one son. Do you, do you see that? I mean, really, if you stick with the context, that's what it's saying. You know, but we, got, we see the bre word brother and we go, yeah, me and Jesus, we've got a groovy thing going, man. <laughs> you know? And we're, 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 we're um, sucking something out of a word that should be feeding us on the Father and the Son. And all we're getting is, I'm in the family with and Jesus is my brother. Hey, brother, come over here and help me. Big brother, you're the big brother. Get over here and do something for me. And we miss what? The heart. We miss what? The heart. We miss the heart and we religionize it. And we make it something that it's not and we make it important to us when there's... The, there's something so much more important to him in there and you, but, it, but it's never going to appear unless our heart is for his heart. You see that in the sun, you know, and then he says, we're all of one. Start acting like, it. I mean, you see that? It, see, he's not just saying we're all one, so we're all saved and da, da, da. Theologically, and you should have assurance of salvation and da da da. That's not what he meant when he said all of one. He says we're all of one. This spirit, he just the spirit he just described, that was willing to suffer to bring the Father many sons. He says we're all of one. And I wonder what the back of my shirt's gonna look like with his red leaning up against that. Got a big heart on it. Anyway, so uh, I don't know. You know, the Holy Spirit is just pulling at me in a good way, but it, it just uh, wanting, I don't know, it feels sometimes like he's just wanting to break out. we 
got to finish this. Um, why is he not ashamed to call us brethren? Because we're all of one spirit, one way, one nature, one son. And he's not ashamed of us because we're, he knows we're not going to rip off or abuse and use the Father. He cares about the Father, and the Father cares about the Son. The only thing that keeps him from being ashamed of us is he sees this reality that we are in him and can draw from him, and the hope for the whole creation and everything was the manifestation of the sons of God. And so that's what he's going, this is... This is it. Now it's up to y'all to conform. You know what I mean? It's it, to, to embrace that, to allow that. Let this mind be in you. Don't work it in there. God, this is hard. And, uh, no. It says let. That's a yielding word. Lord, just, just do it in me. Just, just conform me to the image of your son and so that you, so that you won't ever have to be ashamed of me, but you see, the truth is, he could never be ashamed of those sons because they have passed through the cross, and, and and they are one with him. And anything that's not, you know, what did Paul say in Galatians? Let them be accursed. What does that word mean? The the word comes from the. It means uh, designated for death. Yeah, see, amen. That was Sarah, amen, and over there, amen. Designated for if they if they don't if they preach any other gospel, let them be designated for the death of the cross. <laughs> he still hadn't rejected them. He says, well, let's get him to the cross and it'll fix it right up. You know, you see that? I and mean, we go, yeah, them dirty, you know, I thought of a word that was probably, <laughs> you know, yeah, we're going to get him. No, it wasn't that word. That's really bad, Joseph. I would never have thought that. <laughs> it is to realize that there's only one answer that God really has, and it's the cross, so that Christ may now just live in his body. In your body, but in his body, but in your body. Temple of the Holy Spirit, temple of the Lord. All right, so I, keep, I can't seem to get off this verse here. Uh, verse 12 saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Okay, so what's that saying? What's that saying? Saying, I will declare thy name. Whose name? The Father's name. I'm trying to bring many sons to glory here. I'm dying to do this. I'm di I've died and I'm trying to bring it about. So now you can see him in the midst of the church, okay? Not this building, but the church. How does it describe it, Paul? The church which is his body. Not the church which is on the corner. Not the church that has the right doctrine. The only church that matters to him is the church which is his body. And that's why... That's always in there. He makes sure he, go, he doesn't just say church. Church, which is his body. So that we understand that this son heart lives in us because the son lives in there. We're not trying to get his heart. We're trying to know his heart. But we, we want to be conformed to him and allow him to live in us. And then his heart will come out of us. We go, this is hard. It's impossible. It's not hard. Impossible. Nobody can do that. That's why there's, there's not perfect men. It's unto a perfect man. And that was, that's going to be Christ. So 
So I will declare your name. I will say, Father, in the midst of the other sons, and we'll all go, Abba, Father. You never read that in Galatians 4? <laughs> Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. And so, you know, in closing... How many times have we, uh, as a son, sang praise to the Father in the midst of the congregation? You know, just said, we are your son, and this is your son in me, and this is your life. And this is the way that, see, here it is. This is the way that you are towards your Father. You don't have to work that up. You don't have to fake it. You don't have to. This is the way you are toward your father. And so he's, he's declaring that to us in our midst. This is what's going on. This is, this is the fulfillment of that. And it is nothing short of just the way he wants it done. It's not just sitting in a church and going, praise God, praise God. Or now, let me change it. Praise Jesus. No, 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 let me change it again. Praise the Father. From whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all the creatures. Here. Not, not in a religious way. But a recognition of what he wants and what we're meant to be. And to declare that in the midst of the church, to declare that so that we, till we all come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The perfect man. Let's quit. Father, we just thank you so much that you have blessed us with more than finances or healing or all the things that many clamor after. You've blessed us beyond our physical situation and our financial situation and all of that. You have you've brought us into your son, the son of your love. You brought us into him as our kingdom the kingdom of your dear son. He is that government. And of his government, there will be no end. It won't stop if he's formed in us. So we look to you and we long after what you desire. And so instead of being moved by your words, Father, that that's what you want, we are moved by Jesus' heart that that's what we will give you. And that's what you will gain. And so, Holy Spirit, continue to, um, continue to minister life, wonderful words of life to us. We ask in your name, Jesus. Amen.